Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Quick video idea I wanted to share with you. Hope you're having a great day, by the way. Also, I want to let you know this uh, this particular uh, video is being brought to you by Cholula. There's Mama Cholula right there. A very underappreciated woman, I must say. Anyway, <clears throat> not really sponsored. I just like Cholula, and it happens to be there. And I'm putting it on some homemade uh, french fries, which are delicious. Anyway, today's topic came up from, sprouted into my head after a phone conversation with a client. And today's topic is, how do you get your portfolio more conservative without serious tax consequences? In other words, without selling things, etc. Let me give you some ideas of what you could be doing right now if you want to start moving your portfolio more conservative to a more conservative stance. But you don't want to sell things and realize huge, ta huge um, <clears throat> taxable gains. I'll give you some ideas and then a little bit of reflection. Number one, uh, don't buy anything new. So in other words, if you have, let's say you have a $100,000 portfolio, 90000 is invested, 10000 is in cash. First thing you do is don't buy anything with that cash. So keep that 10%. So that's step number one, obvious. Step number two is if you are saving money and adding to your accounts every month, add to cash, don't add to investments. So over a period of time, let's just say you are saving $1,000 a month. Over the course of the next 10 months, you'll add $10,000 and you'll have 20,000 cash. So that's step number two. All right, step number three, all right, is if you get any losers in your portfolio or anything that is just not appropriate anymore, etc., cetera, uh, maybe showing a loss where you can claim a taxable loss, sell those. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not a lot of positions. Maybe it's a little bit, but it adds up. Maybe it's, say, 3% of your portfolio you can, you can trim. Great. Well, now you're going from 10 to 13% in, in conservative. And then while you're adding cash, you know, it's step number two. That's the cash percentage is increasing that way also. So there's three things you can do. Number four, what you can do is if you also have a 401k, uh, you can reallocate a 401k um, more conservatively with no tax consequences. Because you're inside a tax deferred account, you can sell some things. So in other words, if you have $100,000 in a brokerage account and you have $100,000 in your 401k and you want to get more conservative, say by 10%, Move to, uh, let's say you look, look at that combined portfolio of 200,000, move 20,000 in the 401k into something conservative. There's a no, no tax consequence to that at all, or whatever percent would better fit how you feel about risk. And the last thing you can do, and again, this might be a little rounding around the edges thing, <clears throat> sort of like selling your losers. If you have any holdings that have just spiked up to well beyond reasonable valuation, you know, you will own one of these marijuana stocks that shot up or something, uh, trim a little bit off. Now, that's a little bit of a tax consequence. So you, well, you know, sometimes with certain things like that, <clears throat> fleeting stories, etc., it's better to pay the taxes than to lose all the money. But that's an aside. I'm talking about, you know, say a, a regular holding. You have something that's done pretty well. You want to hold on to it, but it's got a little too exuberant. You could say maybe trim a little bit of that off and add that to cash. So those five steps you could take to move your portfolio to cash without significant tax consequences. Hope you found that helpful. That's the conversation I had today with the client. And if you're in that position where you feel like you're too heavily invested and you need to walk back your risk level a little bit, those are five things you can do to uh, get a little more conservative. Hope that helped. And I didn't even mention some of the things you can do if you are fortunate to work with a company and have restricted stock options and other things. So. Uh, if you're looking for more ideas, you can go to my blog, you can go to my website, or feel free to reach out, give me a call. But uh, hopefully this list gets you started. Enjoy. Enjoy.